Hey guys, and welcome back to Pro Speed Baseball. We're back with Araldus Chapman, and we're breaking down his mechanics piece by piece to show you how he efficiently and effectively uses each one of these pieces to maximize velocity. Let's get started. Now, are you a pretty good pitcher? You're pretty accurate, but you're not quite getting the velocity that you want. You're trying everything. You're trying to push off the rubber. You're trying to rip the hips open, rip the shoulders open. Maybe the coach is telling you to bend your back and you're not getting any results. Well, this is going to be the video for you. And I'm going to show you how to use your torso efficiently to let that arm whip around the body the way it's supposed to and get maximum use out of your core, which in turn leads to maximum velocity. Now to understand how to use your core and understand what's going wrong and why we're not getting that velocity that we want, we have to understand the basics of what our core needs to be doing throughout the pitch. Simply put, we want to have a relaxed core to start out. Then when we start our motion towards the plate, we want to have a nice stretch core and we'll get into that in a second where we're really stretched out and we've got it all loaded up for a lot of power and at the very end we're, it's going to lead us into a nice flat back neutral follow through. So what we have to know is what is a neutral core and what is a stretch core. Now a neutral core is just this. It's a straight back where the back muscles and the abdominal muscles are both equally relaxed. That's a very neutral core. And a very stretched or loaded for power core is going to be where we have a nice arch in our back like we see Araldus in right here. He has a nice arch in his back and his abdominals are now very stretched out and he's loaded up for power. Now what happens if we don't get into this nice stretched position, we're actually going to lose out on all the speed we've built up in our legs to release the ball. So if we get into this position and we haven't stretched our abdominals out, we now have nothing loaded up to fire the arm through and let the arm whip around our body. And we're now forced to use the little muscles in our shoulder to create speed, which promotes a lot of injury and strain on the arm. And we cannot get nearly the amount of velocity we can if we're using the big muscles in our core to help propel the ball forward. If we keep a neutral core all the way into this position, it would be like trying to shoot a bow and arrow without drawing the string back and just pushing it forward. So what we do to get into this position is we have to start with our stride and how we load into this into our back leg when we stride. Now, what we need to do here is create a balance point in the middle. So if we had a seesaw, this would be our balance point in the middle. And we had two kids that are equal weight balancing out. So if they're equal weight, the seesaw would balance out perfectly. This is what we need to do in our stride. And how we attain this is we load into this back ankle. And what this does is it puts the balance point into our big glute muscles, which are some of the biggest muscles in the body, therefore creating a lot of stabilization. And more importantly, making it very easy to counterbalance our hips and our upper back, which we need to have going in opposite directions to create this nice arch and the stretched abdominal position that we want to be in. Now if we don't load into this back glute and we load our weight into our toes, we are now employing the quadricep muscles that are in the front of our leg. And this would be like putting the middle of the seesaw all the way over to one side and taking those same two kids that weigh the same amount and getting a huge imbalance in our pitching mechanics. So let's go ahead and load into this back heel and employ our big glute muscles for stabilization. And now that our glute is stabilizing us and we're in a good balanced position, now we need to just know when we get into this arch back stretched abdominals position. And a really good way to think about this guys is key off of our upper back and our foot. And what I mean by this is when we get loaded here, you can see Chapman is still in a really neutral position and his foot is now gliding across the dirt. If we draw a line down our toes, we're gonna see that his foot is gonna work back towards this line. And if we pretend that our upper back and our foot are connected and they go back at the same time, we're gonna time this stretch out perfectly. If you watch his upper back and his foot, the upper back is going to lean back as the foot goes towards this line. And the reason we're timing this is because if we get our torso stretched too early, so say Chapman is stretched in this position, his foot will start going back and his torso is gonna to already wanna fire and that's gonna throw off the kinematic sequence. We want the sequence to happen from the ground up. So as the foot opens up, the hips are going to open up, and those hips are going to lead into opening up the shoulders through this nice arch core. 
but if we're already stretched out before then, we're going to throw off that timing. We're not going to be able to take full advantage of the kinematic sequence that starts when we leverage the ground for power when our foot lands in our stride. And we also don't want to wait too late to get our chest out and stretch these abdominals out because that would be the same as, say, shoot a rubber band and pulling it back real fast and letting it come shoot forward versus pulling it back nice and slow and then letting it fire forward, which we all know is going to shoot a lot harder if we pull it back slow. So that's what we want to feel like the abdominals are doing. They're stretching back nice and rhythmatically, and when that foot hits, they're fully stretched out. Now it's ready to slingshot forward and whip that relaxed arm around the body for maximum arm speed. And now that we've timed this nice stretching of the abdominals and chest out position, we just need to know now where we want our chest pointing in the sequence of the pitch. So when this lead foot lands, we're gonna want our chest pointing straight in front of us and then slightly up. So if we look at this from a straight on view, when this front foot lands, straight in front of us would be directly to our left if we're a left-handed pitcher or directly to our right if we're a right-handed pitcher. So if someone were filming you face on, the chest would be pointing directly at the camera. And now the chest is going to work in a very slightly turned and downward motion. So if we mark Aroldis's chest all the way down, we can see that he's starting to move the the direction of his chest downwards and we can see now that it's pointing directly at the catcher and it's going to continue to move down and now it's pointing straight down towards the ground and he has now released the stretch in the abdominals and the ball is gone and and this is going to lead us into that nice flat back position so the key thing here we want to notice is that Aroldis has not spun his shoulders open to get his chest out in front. He's let his hips pull this stretched torso around, and he now is pulling down with the abdominals, pulling that chest to the ground while lagging the arm behind him and releasing. If we spin these shoulders from the top, we're going to waste this stretched abdominal position because the shoulders can spin a lot faster than we can pull down. And some of the big problems that come from spinning out are, first of all, it kills velocity and we get a really weak throw. And we tend to leave a lot of pitches either way out to the right or we try to overcompensate and we spike them or throw them way to the left, respectively to left or right-handed pitchers. If we had a right-handed pitcher, we'd leave it on this side and overcompensate on other pitches and fire them way to the left, making it really hard to paint the corners and hit the spots we want to hit. So a great way to keep this from happening is we, we come up with a path shape we want our chest to follow. We keep the spine angle so we're not leaning too far back and we create this overall chest path that we wear. It stretches out and fires downwards and if we think about firing the chest from a stretch position downwards it's going to keep us from spinning out and it's going to put us into this beautiful flat back follow through that we're all trying to get into and when we get into this position naturally we know that we've employed the big muscles properly and taken all the strain that we can off of the throwing arm and maximized our potential velocity Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, stay tuned. I got a great bonus coming up for you. I'm going to play a preview out of our pitching series. And if you click on the link in the preview, it'll take you to a place where you can see the entire pitching series for absolutely free of charge. Go ahead and check that out, guys. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys soon. Hey guys, I'm Michael Durr with Pro Speed Baseball, and today I'm going to show you how you can use your upper body and stretch out the abdominal muscles to create that slingshot effect with your arm to maximize arm speed, which in turn maximizes velocity. Let's go ahead and get started. So if we're going to use the upper body properly, what we have to understand is what we need to do with our torso, our upper body. And very simply put, we're going to want to stretch out the abdominals and flex the back and get ourselves into a nice arch position to, to use this in the throw to catapult the arm and slingshot the arm towards the plate. Now, the reason this works so well is that 